great Sarabande and Gigue from the Cello Sonata Number no. 3 by Johann Sebastian Bach, played there in the viola by Molly Wise, one of our former students in Houston, Texas these days. And now we're about to begin just a second hour of our 12-hour marathon celebration of the music of Bach. It's called Bach Around the Clock, and it's coming to you here from Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stanton, Virginia, our hosts, very gracious hosts for the last five years of our Bach Around the Clock series, where we celebrate on the Saturday closest to Bach's birthday, his music with a day-long celebration. Can't have anybody in the pews quite yet. We hope to see you all here next year, um, but we do have this virtual celebration with a lot of performers who have been coming here uh, to share some great works of Bach by you. We're calling this year's program Well-Tempered and Reimagined. Uh, the Well-Tempered part is coming up as we hear the first of the 24 preludes and fugues from Book Two of Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier, arranged and premiered today by String Quartet. There are arrangements made by Nicholas Kitchen, the artistic director of the Heibitz Institute, and of course the artistic director of the Borromeo Quartet, which he and his wife founded 25 years ago. Now, the reimagining part is going to come in several different uh, incarnations. Of course, here during this time of pandemic, we've all had to reimagine ways that we can celebrate and share music. Part of that is bringing you this virtual concert here. But as you will hear, we've had to, we've had the chance to kind of reimagine some of Bach's music along the way too. So you're going to be hearing some music by Bach that is arranged for violin and double bass. Not making this up, it sounds amazing. And uh, what we've done with the Bach Around the Clock Chamber Choir, which is usually delighting us over the course of these concerts. And you'll be hearing from the music director, uh, Paul Weber, coming up in just a bit. But first, we're going to turn it over now to Nicholas Kitchen and the Borromeo Quartet to launch us on this adventure. Hello and welcome to Bach Around the Clock. I'm Nicholas Kitchen, Artistic Director of the Heifetz International Music Institute. This day is a celebration of someone who just means so much to everyone who loves music. Bach had an ability to create music that has spirit, that expresses the deepest emotion, that conveys the dancing energies, and all of it with a kind of understanding of the gears of the way music fits together that really probably we could say has never been equaled by any other musician. We all sort of drink at this fountain of Bach's insight into music. Uh, one of the incredible things which he created was the well-tempered clavier. He created the first book. He thought it was so wonderful, he created the second book. Uh, this is where um, there is a prelude and a fugue in every single key. Every, you know, if you look at the keys and go up uh, through a scale, there are 12 pitches. And uh, Bach made a prelude and fugue for every one of those 12 pitches, both in a major and minor key. Um, it's for the clavier, which means it could be uh, what we think of as a piano, it could be a clavichord, it could be an organ, just something that uh, creates sound uh, with that keyboard. Well, it is interesting that one of the few things Bach said about music was to uh, accustom oneself and, and attempt to sing at the keyboard. And... Um, well, of course, he created such wonderful vocal music, and he created such wonderful string music. And uh, I became aware that there was an amazing part of history where a person, Baron von Sweeten, uh, was a host to Haydn and host to Mozart and a host to Beethoven. And they would just read hours and hours of the music of Bach and Handel. And uh, Baron von Sweeten would encourage them to take the well-tempered clavier music and transcribe it for string instruments. 
both Mozart and Beethoven took uh, von Swieten up on this offer. The uh, Mozart pieces became K404 and K405. Well, it, one could give a long explanation, but basically I do believe there's a way that singing and music of the clavier and this miraculous music that Bach created in the well-tempered clavier is something that can meet kind of beautifully in string instruments and particularly string quartet. So inspired and, and agreeing with that sentiment that was expressed by von Swieten, I took the encouragement to transcribe all of both books of the Well-Tempered Clavier for string quartet. And uh, the Borromeo Quartet that I've had the honor of being in for many years now has been, um, had a wonderful journey. I appreciate so much my colleagues being willing and uh, then enthusiastic to take it on where we have recorded the first book and then I had to transcribe the second book. But today the events are going to be organized around that entire second book of the Well-Tempered Clavier. And you are going to hear very fresh performances. You'll see we're in masks because these were done in the last month. Uh, and this is really the maiden voyage of all of these pieces uh, as string quartets and as pieces for our string quartet. It really is so exciting to work on these and feel their beauties and their almost endless variety of characters and, and the ingenuity with which Bach weaves together every single detail of the music. Uh, these works have inspired, I think, more learning from great musicians than almost any other works, whether it's Schumann or Brahms or Beethoven or Bartok. Uh, all of our greatest composers knew that there was some great, great insight to be gained uh, from spending time with these works. Uh, well, I think I've said enough to prepare what's going to happen today. We're going to have the works done as string quartet. We're going to have them done on the keyboard. Uh, my father is going to be playing as part of this. And of course, I first became familiar with these pieces through him. I'm so happy about that and uh, so happy that all of us will continue in our learning, our celebration, and our love for the music of Bach.
Happy birthday, Johann Sebastian Bach. Thank you for all this music. Uh, I'm going to be playing uh, two preludes and fugues from the Well-Tempered Clavier. First one will be uh, from book two, the second prelude. Uh, it's in a minor key. Uh, and the second pair that I'll play are in a major key, uh, and they are number nine from the first book. Uh, and rather than really dwell on the musical, you know, descriptions of the pieces, um, I think I'd like to say a little bit something about my process of how I make these recordings. Because you might wonder, how do you, how do you make the recording of this polyphony and play all the parts yourself? And there's an easy way to do it, and then there's the really good way to do it, I believe. And the easy way would be to use a metronome and to just uh, hang the whole piece's rhythm on, you know, mechanical surety to come up with a predictable result. But that's not the way I like to play Bach, uh, whether I'm playing solo or with other people uh, in real, regular playing life. So why would I do that in the studio? So instead what I do is um, I will start with one of the parts and I will play it as if I'm being accompanied by another player. And I use my imagination to imagine how they play it, and I interact to my imaginary partner. And uh, uh, I record that first part of the piece. And it might be the entire piece, or it might be half of the piece, whatever. Um, and then uh, after that, I record the other part that was in my imagination before and I really try to interact with the first recorded part when I do that and then this is where I think it gets interesting the next thing I usually do is I erase the first thing I recorded and now I re-record it against the more interactive if you will second voice okay and I this process goes back and forth sometimes many many times until finally I can play the piece all the way through either part. And even though I'm sort of sure the way this interpretation works, it's not as if I'm playing with somebody who's inflexible. And it's not as if uh, this is the only way the piece could be played. It sort of roughs off the edges and at the same time keeps it lively. And spontaneous and to me that's probably the most important thing about playing Bach is that the 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 music is so perfectly written it's like Shakespeare the words would be so perfectly written you don't want to change the words but you do need to be in the moment when you say them uh, for them to have the breath of life to them and uh, so anyway that's the way these are recorded and uh, We'll start with the prelude number two and fugue two, and then prelude nine and fugue nine, Johann Sebastian Bach, The Well-Tempered Clavier, book first two, this case, and then book one. Thanks. Happy birthday, J.S. Bach.
Hi, Bach enthusiasts. I'm Paul Weber, conductor and director of music for the Bach Around the Clock Chamber Choir. Obviously, because of COVID, the choir could not meet this year and prepare a cantata for you. But, representing the choir, we have soloists, singers in the choir, who will be singing arias. And each of them uh, will introduce themselves in the piece that they're going to share with you. We look forward to next year, Bach Around the Clock, 2022, when the choir will return and sing a glorious cantata. Hello, I'm Audrey Harper. I'm a soprano, and I will be singing Jauchset Gott in Allen Landen from Bach's Cantata 51. This aria is a glorious fanfare that says, Shout to God for joy to the heavens. And accompanying me will be Virginia Valena on the organ and Nick Harvey on the trumpet.
Hi everyone, my name is David and I'm in Paris and my wife, Katerina, Hello. Did, I'm she, in Boston. Um, we were asked to add to this collection of Bach excerpts and we're really pleased to present uh, you guys with uh, an excerpt from a performance of the B minor mass, of Bach's B minor mass, that we did in Leipzig in Bach's church, uh, the Thomas Church, last summer in 2019 um with no distancing whatsoever in those good old days um anyway this this movement is uh um, a particular favorite for the for the two of us um mine is is because uh my wife katarina played in it and she played in it so beautifully well it's also a favorite of mine but um it's an extraordinary movement within an extraordinary piece which is such an immense monument, a musical monument, um, which actually in my uh, uh, take is almost like a, a piece of architecture. And in this particular case, the movement um, is based on four words in Latin. Laudamus te, which means um, we praise you. Uh, and then benedicimus te, which is we bless you. Um, then adoramos te, we adore you, and finally glorificamos te, we um, glorify you. All towards God, of course. They're, they're given such incredible variety of, of painting in, in, in Bach's hand that you never feel like it's repetitive, even though the singer is saying the words over and over again. And yet the piece flies by um, with so much uh, variation and subtlety, and it's, and it's really extraordinary the way it does it. There was a thing that happened just before before we played this piece, which was uh, two weeks, two months, sorry, before the performance in Leipzig, um, Notre Dame in Paris um, burned. And, and immediately it sprung to my mind that here you have this massive cathedral with the four central uh, points, you know, form on, on, on an axis like that. And then you have the Laudamus Te, which is um, uh, this, this incredible solo movement, which, in the end resembles the spire, which unfortunately, um, you know, burned during, uh, during, that, um, uh, fire. during that fire. But it, it, it reminded me always, the Laudamus is, has that kind of filigree, the, the lightness, the, the, the intricacy, 
the the constant the repetitive um, patterns, but that are always upward moving, and um, it's just one of those gorgeous. It's the it's the spire of the cathedral. If you know if the B minor mass is, is Notre Dame, then this is the spire. That's such a beautiful image, and and you know, I'm thinking you know at the beginning of the piece, there's the Kyrie, and the Kyrie is is this this moment of of where the fear of God is. Is expressed by the chorus, and you remember in the violins, there's this beautiful scale which comes from up and just comes down gently, as if God is coming down and passing the word to to the earth. And then uh, a few movements later, we have the Laudamus Musti, where everything, as you say, is going back up there, and that that relationship between above and and on the earth is what this piece is about, and what gives us so much a revelation. Um, I mean, Bach's, uh, obviously we know that, you know, he spent his entire life adding to this piece um, and he finished it shortly before he died, which is why he actually never heard it in its entirety. But um, the Laudamos comes from the early period. So uh, he, he was a, it's fresh and it's, it's youthful and there's something so personal and each time he changes. And I was also thinking about how it's in A major but there are two sections, uh, one in F sharp uh, minor, which is of course the relative minor of A major, and then the C sharp minor, which is the, the third. So either you're going the third down to the, to the sixth to the F sharp minor, or you're going a third up to C sharp minor, which balances these, these two very personal areas. It's like every time he goes into the minor in this work, it sounds like he's getting away from rhetoric and he's into something really personal as if he's trying to express his, his happiness and his joy. And I, and I love the fact that you and Adele were so much intertwining during this movie. Well, right, that's the, the essence of a duet and of, a, of an obligato aria in this case, which is an aria that is accompanied by a solo instrument. And basically we had a conversation going on the entire time, and that gives it the the human aspect. So we're we're in we're in Latin, and we're in this in this world of, um, uh, you know, of the of the of the liturgical mass. But we're actually we're actually impersonating something very very um, human. And as artists, and we are speaking to you know an audience, and and it, there's just this great connection. And especially in that church, uh, playing in the organ loft, which is already high up. You just have this incredible feeling of of being uplifted, and um, yeah, anyway, I, it was an what, experience. What, what you guys couldn't see on the video is that we were playing to the church, and down at the back of the church was Bach's grave. And um, you know, when you're playing to when he's in the audience, you got to be careful. It, it's a, that's a we, that's yeah. a serious critic. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was a great moment for 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 me. I'll never forget that, and um, we're really happy to share this with you today so we hope you enjoy it hope you enjoy it
Live chamber music returns to Stanton with the Spring Eternal Concert Series. Four programs featuring the young masters of the Heifetz Ensemble in residence, presented in a safe and socially distanced setting in the newly opened Great Hall of the Blackburn Inn and Conference Center, or available to view online in real time and on demand. Information at heifetzinstitute.org. Major support for the Heifetz International Music Institute is provided by Mary Baldwin University, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Virginia Commission for the Arts, and the Community Foundation of the Central Blue Ridge. For a complete list of our supporters, sponsors, and in-kind donors, please visit heifetz.institute slash donors. We thank them and you for supporting our mission to enable the next generation of great artists 